Do you have to turn it off? Hide. Right. There we are. Yeah, All right. hey, we're, here. we're here. All right. Well, welcome from uh, DevOps Enterprise Summit 2023. I'm Mark. I'm Chris. And we are here in Las Vegas on day three of the conference. I've been here since uh, since Monday. We participated in the uh, Dora Summit on on Monday, and then we had three days of conferencing since then. So, why are we here, Chris? Uh, we are here to talk about all things DevOps and to really hear the stories about how truly enterprise scale companies have managed and you know gone through their DevOps transformations. Uh, hear about not only what they've done from a technology space, but also the impacts that they've had. We've had some very powerful sessions throughout. Um, and of course, always here to meet other folks, meet new friends, uh, network, and um, to help share the gospel of feature flags. All right, so uh, I'm uh, Mark. I'm a developer evangelist here at uh, DevCycle. Uh, and my name's Chris. I am one of the account executives at DevCycle, but I call myself a feature flag bearer. I think that's a, a better title than account executive. <laughs> always, always good. So impressions. So my, my impression of this, so this is our second time here. It's year, year two for us. Um, and this year is uh, um, just improvement from, from, from the last year, from the last experience we had. Um, and my sort of impressions are that there are two primary groups of uh, people that I've, I've had a chance to talk to. There are those that are here um, that are in DevOps that uh, have their uh, business leaders, business champions here at the conference with them. And they've been successful in starting a digital transformation, completing a digital transformation, or somewhere in between. And then there's the second group of primarily DevOps uh, people, programmers, le software leaders who are looking for ways of being able to engage with their uh, senior leadership in being able to start a digital transformation from being able to show how DevOps can provide value within their organization. So both of them are, are of course, great, great groups to talk to because you get sort of the insight of how did you start a transformation what business value did you did you show what did you provide um, and then the other group which are what are the challenges that you're facing in being able to convince uh, upper management that this is something you, you should be doing um, that business value can be generated from a from a devops team from a devops uh, mindset uh, and that you can start a digital transformation and move towards there so what what uh, what what impressions have you had so far, Chris? Yeah, for me, it's always interesting to see what technology trends become like the hottest topic at the DevOps Enterprise Summit. And this year, I think there are two main trends that have evolved. Uh, one is the uh, implementation and the execution of using generative AI, um, ChatGPT, and Claude or, or whatnot technology, and the way that teams are using it. We heard a little bit about it last year, but it was more so of people being cautious of how is this going to impact and disrupt our industry. Whereas this year, it, the disruptions already occurred and people are now talking about the tactile, applicable implementation, what they are doing to actually utilize and um, implement this into their platforms. But the other more exciting trend that I've heard from this conference this year is the emphasis on platform engineering and more especially uh, the developer experience. It's been a buzzword that has been spoken over and over again in many breakout sessions and many of the main keynotes. Um, and it's great to see the focus on how teams are leveraging, whether it's technology, culture shifts, leadership uh, shifts, um, to really enforce and improve upon that developer experience. Um, and it's great to see because it, it shows a, a focus on leadership to cultivate um, and, and give the spotlight and the value recognition that these developers that are working hard to bring value to their, to their companies and the code that they write um, and the software that they develop um, and bring that to the forefront. Um, and of course, with, with DevCycle, that's an area that we are looking to uh, focus on as well. So it's, it's great to see the alignment both within the industry at the enterprise level and what we are doing locally at DevCycle. Yeah, I, I really did like seeing all the different presentations on AI and how to utilize AI inside your organization because we, we all have been exposed to ChatGPT. We've, we've probably all used it in some sense or another, either by uh, helping us with our writing or introductions to emails or 
uh, just having fun <laughs> or or searching the internet in a different way um that's uh, that's always neat but to see how you could use this in a business context to be able to write better code um uh, provide answers to your users without having to create a, a knowledge base uh, system to be able to um, get metrics, guide users throughout your, your applications to be able to find the right screens to do the right things. And I think that um, these are all sort of great applicable uses. But also we, we heard a lot about how to use AI safely. Um, how to find, you know, uh, GitHub, uh, the, the CISO at GitHub got up and talked about how they don't use your code when they, in, in their model. Um, if you send them uh, some code and ask them how to how to fix it, they don't store that. Yeah. And so you can be, you know, safe in knowing that, um, that, your, that your intellectual property isn't bleeding outside of your organization uh, in order to utilize a tool that's going to make your software better. So that's uh, that was really good. And now I didn't hear that from, from there, there weren't any other vendors who were talking about that, but that's certainly an area I know that uh, is important to, to a lot of people that you're not that you're using AI um, uh, intelligently and, and, and with some sort of some thought. And you're not just sort of throwing your entire code base into uh, Copilot or, uh, or, or or all your internal documentations into ChatGPT. Um, and they're learning about all, all your secret sauce and, and, and how to do things. So I, I, uh, I thought that was that was really good. Um, there were a couple of talks that uh, that I, I really liked uh, this year. I went to uh, one on uh, on Kubernetes. Uh, what any talks that you uh, you went to that were um, sort of interesting from a sales perspective or from your, your side of the house? Yeah. So for me, because I'm not an engineer, I'm not working with the code day in, day out. Um, even though it's great to learn about the technology itself, sometimes it does kind of go over my head. But there were a couple of talks that were not specifically related to technology and two come to mind that really had an impact on me. Uh, one was a gentleman that was talking a keynote and talking about uh, the work that they needed to do. I think the title of his talk was The Calvary is Not Coming. And I think that I thought that was such a powerful message because there was such a powerful call to action and essentially what he was saying is there is a need to focus on cybersecurity um, not just for companies to protect their, their profits but at a societal level how are we as a society as companies protecting our most vulnerable like bottom of the maslow hierarchy infrastructure so they're talking about healthcare and what um, the work that he's done essentially in the last decade um, to offer those um, support and basically having such a powerful call to action to all the enterprise and technology leaders that were present here at the DevOps Enterprise Summit um, on how we can do better to ensure that the technology we build that we're serving um, the, the lowest hierarchy of our, our needs and ensuring that we're keeping those people safe. So I thought that was such a, a powerful. Um, yeah, know. that was that was a fun talk. Uh, so the, uh, the the Kubernetes talk I, I went to um, was about how to align Kubernetes with your business. Uh, which I thought was uh, was was really good because uh, I've talked about Kubernetes to, to developers and to business people for years, and to see someone else get up and say, "Well, here's how you can implement, you know, um, uh, uh, security or talk about security, talk about um, the uh, co cost-effective use of Kubernetes, etc." Uh, that was that was uh, great to see. So I really came away with with that. So um, so some of the things that I, I, I really liked uh, this year. So last year I gave a talk about uh, feature flags and uh, and Dora metrics, and uh, this year um, I heard people talk about feature flags without prompting them, and so much so that uh, there were a number of uh, uh, times where people were putting up slides and saying basically feature flags will save your life right that if you're not, <laughs> right that if you're doing continue you know any sort of ci cd pipeline whether it's continuous delivery or continuous deployment that um, you need to be using feature flags and i just I, I love to see when when other people realize the business value of of using feature flags inside their organization um and how they can um how they can make it work and one of the guys uh chuck who got up and talked he was at uh, adp um, they, they built an internal tool, which you know is I think is great that they they're in using feature flags inside their organization. And, and like I said, he he got up there and put that on a slide and, and said it one time in the Dora Summit that you know, we, we were talking uh, about ways to implement you know to, to move to DevOps and, and to implement a CI CD pipeline. And the first thing he said was use feature flags. And, and I <laughs> I looked at him and said exactly. <laughs> um, so it's and you know it's great to see that um, you know. 
over 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 time that the message of, of the use of future flags is, is getting out so uh all right so um anything else that that, that you like from the, the whole the whole conference itself yeah i think one of the other pieces that i really enjoyed was from a biz there's a lot of um sharing from technology leaders on how to drive the business impact of uh, platform engineering and utilizing tools like feature flags um, there's a lot of talk generally at these these conferences on from a developer standpoint from a technical standpoint on why you should be doing uh, using feature flags but hearing some of the talk on what drives the business outcomes um, on how platform engineering teams are looking at their product delivery teams and creating those uh, customer relations, as they call it, because essentially they were the customers for, for the platform uh, engineering team, um, helped give me a lot of insight from a sales perspective on how to have these conversations with technology leaders, um, with teams. I could be talking, for example, to a, a technology, uh, to a development, um, uh, future development sort of persona, and they really want to bring future flags on board. And now I've been given the tools through some of my conversations here at this conference on how I can support and empower these engineers to talk to their their leadership, to their business leaders, um, and how to drive that value home for them. Yeah, and, and, and as, as conferences go, um, this, this, was, this was really good. So we're here at the Cosmopolitan Hotel uh, on the Strip in Las Vegas. Um, we, we weren't we're not staying at the hotel uh, this time <laughs> we are at downs we are a 15 uh, minute walk away which is which is great because it means you get a little bit of exercise in um but uh you know it, it, it's a great facility there's lots of space here there's lots of these uh little breakout places where we can go and have sort of conversations with people or you can sit down with them at breakfast like it's round tables at breakfast people sit there you sit down with somebody you start talking to them just not necessarily about what you do at work but just how you know how they've enjoyed the conference and what what they've gotten out of it you you, you see what other people get out of get out of a conference like this mm -hmm. um, as well and again those sort of conversations with those two different groups of people where you're like you know are you here? Are you, are you here with your 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 product owners? Are you here with your executives? Or are you here by yourself? You yep. know what? Are, what are you looking to get out of that? So they do, and and the food is uh, fantastic. I was going to say the food, the food here the food has is, been on point. The food, the food has been good. Um, which you know, just like a cruise, keep the people happy, keep them well. <laughs> um, but they, but but because of that, because the food is good, people, everybody's staying, and so every so nobody, so everyone's here for breakfast at like you know eight o'clock in the morning every like the tables the tables are full um and so you can sit down and talk to people so they're not they haven't gone off somewhere else and you know and, and there's obvious and, and then there's adequate you know, there's coffee everywhere and there's drinks and i think we're missing snacks i think we had to do the live stream and not go get a midday <laughs> snack which uh, i'm gonna hopefully be able to score a uh, a bag of uh, popcorn uh, at some point but but because they've organized it this way, um, everyone's here. Like, like even this morning, at, yep. you know, day three, day four for some, um, at the uh, at eight forty five, there were a lot of people at the keynote. <laughs> um, you know, and you're thinking that you know, after a couple of nights in Vegas, some people might have <laughs> fallen off a little bit, and maybe not <laughs> suffering a little bit from uh, <laughs> drinking far more than they have um, in the previous six months, um, so or staying out way too late, which which is easy to do. Um, so yeah, so I think from you know the conference organizers i just like the fact that it's, it's these little things that that make it make it possible for us to have all these little serendipitous moments because every everybody's here um and then also the uh you know they, they say this gene got up and talked about this at the beginning where they want to remove the velvet rope and they want the speakers mm. to interact with the, the conference you know the rest of us that's the great unwashed um and they do and so you can you see speakers around you, you i i talked to uh um, George uh, from um, oh what was he? He talked this morning. Um, started with the apples. Yes, I, oh, I, I, I the I, name came to me, I but know, I can't was, remember oh, the company it was, it was right a, off. Was it a bank? Uh, no, it was Discover Card. That was right. It. That it was, was, was financial Card. services. Yeah. And so anyway, he was a speaker. He was at a birds of a feather. Uh, discussion yesterday was you know led led a discussion for a while and that was that was great you know and, and had lots of great things to say uh today um just sort of on a, on a side note and I, I mentioned this him this to him to george uh when i saw him yesterday is uh when um i was in london uh with uh with andrew back in uh, uh the beginning of september um their discover has an internal developer relationship person 
who organizes conferences and, and, and tooling and, 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 and documentation and information so internally that the developers get the experience of, of what developer relationships is that, that we provide to, to our customers. And um, I talked to him a bit about that, and he thought that, yes, that was a great program because uh, his developers are, are a part of that, uh, even though it's driven out of, uh, out of the UK. Um, so that was kind of a neat, uh, been to a couple of conferences now, and there's, <laughs> I'm seeing connections, so, yeah. so that was pretty good. Uh, all right, any, anything else that, uh, other than the food, Chris? I, I, know that, I know there are a few times that you went back for seconds on a few things. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say, I mean, in terms of food, my favorite was the mac and cheese last night. It was absolutely <laughs> delicious. But the other thing, kind of outside of, you know, work and, you know, being in Vegas, Mark and I went to see the BattleBots right. show did, um, yes. last night, and that was super fun. I mm. grew up watching BattleBots. I didn't know it's been around for 25 years. It's almost as old as well, I am. There, there was, <laughs> they did take a break, but I forgot yeah. that it was on, I remember seeing it on Comedy Central, like, yeah. just flipping by, and that was back the old, they're not, they're, I don't know if you've seen BattleBots more recently, the old, the old school stuff is really different, mm. um, but still, a lot of mayhem. Um, yeah, so it was it was, it was a really really fun show. It was great to see Bill Dwyer, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and they they put on a fantastic show. And it, it truly was uh, robot fighting time. And it was, it was <laughs> really it was a really good show. I I really enjoyed it. So again, another good reason to have it in a place where there's other things to do other than just just conference the whole time. Um, yeah, I mean we did we have spent four days here. Um, <laughs> All day, uh, which is uh, we, we, we've been a lot, but it's a, long time. Uh, it's a lot of information. It's a lot. It's all yeah. Um, kind of have to digest it all. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the exhibit hall. So um, there was a number of exhibitors uh, here this year, um, yep. and uh, so who who did you who, whose booths did you like to go and see? Who did you who did you talk to get the best information out of? Uh, well, I would first of all I wanted to say thank you to the folks at Sleuth because it was thanks to them that uh, Mark and I. We're able mm -hmm. to, to come to conference. So if you guys don't know what Sleuth is, they are a Dora metrics platform. Um, and Dora has been one of the hottest topics um, at this conference as well, being leveraged by a lot of different enterprise teams. Um, so definitely check them out. Um, and their booth was great. They had you know a great showing here. The other booth that I enjoyed going to was the digital AI booth. Um, there was mm -hmm. a gentleman there. Um, there was. He uh, is not so much a developer anymore, but he had a very keen interest on how the evolution of feature management has, the practice of it has evolved since his development days. And I had a really good connection with him there. So I, uh, I talked to, I did talk to the people at Sleuth. Uh, that was that was great. I um, also talked to Linear B. So we were a early adopter of their GitStream product, uh, which we use for continuous merge. Now, anybody who's talked to me has known that I, and I will tell you, tell you basically you have to do continuous deployment. It's the only way to deploy software if you're if you're a SaaS. Um, maybe you can do continuous delivery if you're a CLI <laughs> but, or a game or a mobile <laughs> app. But um, continuous merge is kind of that next step where if there if if the system is evaluated the code in such a way that um, you feel that there's limited to no risk of deploying it, then you just deploy it without an, an approved PR, mm -hmm. right? And so what you mean is your, your policy now is that if these certain criteria are met, then we don't need a human to approve the PR. It's not that we are removing, we're not becoming cowboys and just pushing code into, into prod, but we are following a policy which says things like, if this is only a documentation change, then we will let it go. Um, if, you know, and of course, all our tests still have to pass, <laughs> um, these sort of things. Um, if there is just a change to a graphic, and then that can go to go to production again if, if all the tests pass and everything else works. Um, so we were an early adopter, so I got to chat with them uh, about that and to their their DevRel uh, person. Um, uh, his name is I think Ben is I think Ben is their name, and so uh, that was really good. And hopefully we can build a integration with them because I think that uh, one of the things that you could do in this tool as well is to say, hey, here's the stale feature flags in this mm -hmm. pull request, right? So that you don't you sort of start eliminating that. Uh, that code, that, that uh, uh, technical debt early, right? So yes. it doesn't actually get stale. So that as soon as the system realizes that this is no longer uh, valid, you know, this feature flag is no longer used anywhere, let's take it away. Like let's 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 clean up the code. So um, I thought uh, I thought that was uh, that was pretty good. Any any other vendors vendors that were were caught your eye or <laughs> yeah well i mean to be fair because i don't work uh in the writing code a, lo a lot of these tools aren't directly you didn't, you didn't talk to the postgres guys about your database oh yeah no, no not so much they, they they tried to get me but i, I didn't want to talk I, yeah I, I uh um i don't worry about that anymore what was fun though less from like a like a vendor 
evaluation standpoint, obviously a lot of the folks that are at these booths are in similar roles as myself. So kind of be able to talk sales and talk mm. and ask them like, right. what was their um, yeah. conversations like? How have they found mm -hmm. this conference? It was a, it was a, it was an interesting conversation right. I had from sort of that perspective yeah. from that standpoint. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, I did talk to some people about how they, uh, you know, deal with people who don't know what they don't know, mm -hmm. which is a problem that we, not a problem, but it's something that we find is like, but we'll talk to people about feature flags and like, what are feature flags? And so you have to kind of start from the beginning about describing the value that feature flags mm -hmm. can bring in. And then you have to, you know, back up to like, well, what is, you know, do you have a build pipeline? Do you use Dora metrics? And then all of a sudden you realize that you're explaining to them everything from, <laughs> from the beginning, which, which, you know, is, is again, not everybody knows everything. So mm -hmm. you have to, so we were talking a bit about uh, how to position products uh, in that. And that was uh, that was kind of a, a neat uh, neat conversation as well. Um, I did talk to um, who else did I talk to? Uh, no, I didn't talk to the guy. I talked to Near B Sleuth. Um, I talked to the guys at Teleport. They have a Kubernetes product which allows you to authenticate into a Kubernetes cluster um, once per day, uh, and then it controls the, the managed access into that. So you don't have to give everybody sort of carte blanche in Kubernetes, which mm -hmm. I thought was really good, but also it doesn't impact the developer workflow. So from a developer experience perspective, you just log in once in the morning and then you have a credentials and you can keep using Kubernetes uh, all day long. Um, and it, I thought that was that was really good because it it's one of the things that uh, slows people down, slows developers down is the use of new tools. And so if you make it easy for them to use they'll, and secure, they'll use it. So if you just have to say, all oh, you have to do is log into this website. And you're like, well, you know, we have to log into websites usually every morning anyway when we start reading our mail. So it's not uh, not such a big deal. Uh, all right. Um, I'll add one more thing. Not so right. much as like a, like a specific vendor related, but they had uh, a draw this year as well. <gasps> oh, so the they're, draw. yeah. So yeah. context last year when I came, uh, when I filled out, they have basically a stamp card. You go through these couple vendors like here, they give you a stamp, you fill it out, drop it in the in the box. And uh, today at noontime, they had a big draw for a bunch of like prizes that each of the vendors uh, were donating out. Last year, I won a full package of a MetaQuest 2 uh, with like the bag and everything. And I'm like, I told Mark, I'm gonna go two for two and hopefully win something again this year. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't I didn't win anything so. this year, unfortunately, but there were some pretty cool prizes there. Yeah. And, uh, people were happy and walked away with some good stuff. Yes. Yes. That's sometimes the bonus of coming to a conference. That's true. You can walk away with uh, with some stuff. Uh, you can also walk away with swag. I did get um, uh, Datadog, who I talked to as well. We uh, uh, DevCycle has a uh, integration with Datadog so that you can find it. So when something goes haywire, you can see if it was a feature flag that you turned on. <laughs> Um, so you can kind of map that together about what's going on in the system with when you suddenly see error, you know, elevated level error rate, you can uh, you can see if, it, if you need to turn a feature flag off uh, in order in order to, to resolve that issue. Um, they gave me a T-shirt, nice, which was good. Did you pick so, up any socks? Uh, I did. Socks seems to be a socks big thing. are a big thing. Um, I don't. Uh, I wear a specific type of socks, so, I, <laughs> so me picking up socks is a uh, not really useful <laughs> for me. I would say like array. free swag wise, the company that I thought won in terms of giving away free yeah. swag this year was Cosly because they gave away chocolate bars. So. Uh, I miss those. Oh, <laughs> I got it. I got a milk chocolate bar. They had milk chocolate bars, dark chocolate bars. Yeah. And I thought like that's better than any sock yeah. or sticker you could give right. away. Right. I did. Uh, so um, Linear B uh, had a, um, uh, you drew a card and it was a, um, a PR assertion. Oh, <laughs> which was kind of neat. That's awesome. Um, I, I thought it was going to be a magic trick and he was going to try to pick, but no, it wasn't. Uh, it, was, I got, it was my own assertion. Uh, so that was, yeah, a bunch of stickers uh, as well. Someone was giving away backpacks. Oh, wow. I didn't, yeah. I, I uh, uh, can't remember who that was, but uh, I, I decided against Cloud bees, maybe? I saw a whole bunch of people with Cloud Oh, bee, maybe Cloud what? bees. Cloud yeah. bee backpacks. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, and then for, so what did you think about your uh, your uh, conference bag on, on, on day one? I... A little bit lacking, really. Yeah. It was just the shirt. Uh, oh, you, I mean, you didn't get the bag? The green kind of like green, shop grocery yeah. bag? I love it that. Yeah. I mean, oh. it's, it's got utility. It does. It's like, got utility. Yeah, because you, you come to a conference and you're going to get the shirt. Yeah. All right. We're going to get the shirt. We got the shirt, um, which, is, which is always good. Um, and you're going to get some material. Yeah. And we got, you know, and I'm always against. Did you get a sticker for the conference? 
because I, I was a little I bit disappointed. Not, I don't I think they made stickers this year. Because last, did, I usually I, like to collect them so that like yeah, on yeah. my computer I you did, can kind I, of see a sense of. I did not get. I did not. I did not get. I don't think they they made any this year. No, I didn't get a sticker. Um, so you get some printed material. I don't. I don't think there was much material, which is good because I think that. It's 2023. Um, <laughs> if you can't, if you can't put your agenda online, um, oh, should yeah. you consider yourself a technology conference? True. Uh, right. I mean, true. like, like be yeah. So the, the the conference agenda was online, which is great because you can just wander around on your phone and you know yeah. you don't have to carry a piece of paper. Um, but I did like the shop. So it was a reusable shopping bag. Yep. All right. So um, of which uh, and and what it had on it was a little carabiner. So, oh, yeah, so yeah. you could clip it to things because of course you always go to the, the grocery store and you've either forgotten them in your car. Right. If you've driven to the grocery store, you've forgotten them at home. <laughs> right. They never made it in the car. Yep. Right. And so this you could clip on to your backpack or your purse or something. And then yep. you always at least have a shopping. Bag. Definitely designed with application and utility. In mind. Yes. So I thought that was that was a great giveaway. So it is yes. something I will actually use. Good job. IT Revolution. <laughs> so, yes. Good job to IT Revolution uh, for 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 putting this on. Yep. Um, all right. So maybe we'll we'll, we'll kind of uh, before ending, we'll talk a little bit about um, what what do you think? What do you think they can improve on? What do you think? You know, if we you know when we fill out our survey, which yeah. I'm sure I'm sure they're going to give us. What should we tell uh, Gene, Kim, and the crew about what they what they, what can they do better? Mm, I would say the one that's I would say not really related to the conference technology side of it as a whole. Their main uh, floor, and I saw a lot of people comment about this. Um, their main keynote area is a freezer. <laughs> it, oh, it was very cold. Really? Yeah, but okay. I mean, for me, one being a Canadian, it's <laughs> perfect. I felt right at home, so it was great. <laughs> but it was—I could see people around me like shivering. People were commenting and saying like oh. "freezer in the Chelsea" oh, or something okay. like that. Um, All right, so a little something that because because we're in Vegas, of course, everything is air conditioned. That's probably I think probably what it right. is. Too. People are more used to the heat here in the desert. Well, no, but I think they're yeah. Um, I didn't find it particularly cold either, yeah. uh, but uh, again, um, we are from Canada, <laughs> and so uh, it, we're getting into fall, and so it, it yeah, it's going to get cold, and we're getting you, you know, yeah, <laughs> maybe because we're we're getting we're getting used to it, um, yeah. So that's that's probably something to think of because again, they'll probably hold it here again. They, yeah, it was here last year, and I I can't see them moving. Yeah, I think um, they'll probably be here for the next little while. Yeah, I think so because they they also do this in Amsterdam uh, yep. as well, which. Um, which is good. So that there were a number of people I met from Europe who uh, who came specifically for this, but mm -hmm. having one in Amsterdam obviously attracts um, the uh, the Europeans as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know some things that I I, I, I noticed that uh, that would be great to to sort of work on. So there's a, a component of this called birds of a feather, and it's where you can sit around and have kind of a round table discussion with people. Um, I like the idea of it, um, but I found that. Uh, uh, it was sparsely attended at times. And so um, I'm not sure if that's because of when I went <laughs> that there weren't many people there or if it was, um, and, and or if that's just was the way it is. So I, I was thinking maybe some way of improving that a little bit. It's a great thing to do, like the, you know, having someone there to, to lead the conversation, yep. but is everybody coming to it right? Right. Or, or enough people coming to it so that you can have sort of meaningful conversations and people yeah. can come and ask questions of people who are, you know, have, have some input again, yeah. uh, people are trying to learn how to engage their, uh, their senior executive in, in this whole process of yep. doing that. So that, that was one area I, you know, I did, I did go to one, I did, I did participate and talk yeah. and, you know, heard some great ideas, uh, from some people, but I really, um, I, I feel like it, every time I went by, it was very, very, very thin. Yep. very thinly attended so i know they talked about it so everyone knew it um yeah. it's not it, it's it's out of the way it's not hidden um, yeah it's not good. the most easily accessible it's not, it seems but, yeah. but it's not but it's not hidden <laughs> right you don't right. feel like it's in another building or something so anyway i would like them to see uh see more infrastructure around the networking side of things so when i uh, attended the open source summit in vancouver they had the ability directly within the, the app that they were organizing the conference that you could uh, direct message people, their other attendees directly within the app. So you didn't have to figure out their LinkedIn. You didn't have to find their contact information. If you saw somebody in the attendee list that you feel like you could have connection with, um, then you can directly message them within the app. And not only that, within that uh, infrastructure, they had a place in the middle of the conference called networking. Oh, they had tables set up. Oh, okay. And so you could schedule a time right. slot and we'll tell you, hey, you and so have been scheduled oh. to meet at table number four. 
Oh, that's and so it. you oh. get there, and then you don't have to look around for each other. Right, you don't right. have to be like, oh, I'm that's wait for you at the oh, that's, oh, So that's I thought neat. like yeah. more infrastructure around just yeah. um, well, that, yeah. facilitating oh, people good, to network. Good, sure. I think that would have been great for the oh, that's, Yeah, it's a good, good piece of feedback. Yeah. There. Anyway, all right. Well, so um, let's uh, let's wrap this up here. So uh, again, this is uh, Mark and Chris from uh, Doze uh, 2023. Uh, you know, we had a great time. We're so happy to. Uh, so we're going to get to come uh, mm -hmm. wanna, and definitely want to come back uh, next year because I think that there's a lot for us to to learn, a lot for us to share. Uh, and I love this community. It's a great place to be. Maybe we'll come with a booth. Maybe we'll come. With <laughs> maybe maybe marketing will uh, will spring and we'll come. We'll come here with a booth and a bigger team. But I hope hopefully next year we'll we'll at least be here with the two of us doing uh, doing this again. Yeah. Right. Anyway, well, that's is us signing off from uh, from Vegas. Uh, we will. Again, hopefully be back next year and we can talk to you again then.